most lethal weapons are champions of precision, speed, and fierce explosions. This has been the concept of the world's deadliest missiles, but now the U.S. has raised the standards on what an effective missile should be like as reports of its secret ninja bomb surfaces. The sheer might of this missile is something that has only been seen in movies, and its precision has never been attained by any other missile. This ammunition has effortlessly received the title of the most dangerous and deadly ammunition that has ever been created. What was the inspiration behind this destructive technology? Has it ever been deployed? Join us as we explore the deadly abilities of the secret ninja bomb that the United States developed. While the fascination derived from watching science fiction movies can be very compelling, there used to be a persistent awareness that the technology depicted in such a play is often non-existent. But now, it's no longer that way because whatever you see on your screen might just appear in the skies of one's realistic world. If there is any nation that would embark on the creation of something so advanced, it would be the United States, because it is already renowned for being at the forefront of technological advancements. That being said, it would not come as a shocker that this nation has finally developed something right out of a movie scene. On a show with Joe Rogan, the host, who was obviously stunned, stated that he recently discovered something truly astonishing that seemed unreal for this world. The modified R-9X Hellfire missile. According to him, the missile was unlike any other that had been created. One amazing ability of this missile is that, instead of the missile blowing up a target with every other thing around it serving as collateral damage, the technology enables a direct and precise deployment on whatever target it is aimed at without causing unnecessary damage to the environment. No other missile in the history of aviation has been able to achieve this, and this has given this particular ammunition from the United States an edge over other recently developed missiles. On the 26th of February, 2017, one of the most wanted people on Earth was taken out by a drone strike coordinated by the U.S. Air Force in Syria. This news was covered by news channels all around the world, and the main reason was not just the man, but the unique top-secret missile that was used to get the job done, the AGM-114 R-9X Hellfire Missile. The host of the show also mentioned this incident. According to him, the guy is believed to be one of the main planners of the 9-11 attack, and the government continuously kept an eye on him, and they were able to track his routine. Every morning, he would come out to his balcony to have coffee, and they carefully timed two of those things, and that's all it took. There was no explosion, no noise, just two shots, and the guy was diced into pieces. They used laser guidance for accuracy. What's interesting is that it only propels for the first two seconds. After that, it uses fins to follow its path silently. It's like a flying rage hypodermic. This is a special arrowhead designed for bow hunting. Unlike a regular arrowhead fixed in place, this one, upon hitting its target, opens up, creating large holes for a quick kill. This arrowhead is a bit controversial. If it hits a branch or something that is obstructing its target, it might distort the arrow's path and lead to a bad shot. There is also a chance it could open accidentally in the quiver where it is kept while trying to draw and shoot. But if it stays closed and hits the target, it makes a big hole and kills its target instantly. On this missile, there is a broadhead that is referred to as the Carnor. It is equipped with four blades that makes it effective for bow hunting. The controversy in bow hunting is about durability versus cutting surfaces. They need to fly well, and too much metal can cause drifting in the wind. To make sure the arrow hits the target with the broad head, one might need to adjust the head a bit. Once it is rightly adjusted, the user can go ahead and shoot the arrow from a distance of 60 or even 70 yards. This careful adjustment is called broadhead tuned. Unlike field points where the fletchings guide the arrow well, with broadheads, there is the need to be very focused and accurate. That's the challenge with broadheads. That aside, the missile is fast, carries no explosives, and does almost no damage to anything other than the target. Let's have a look at the earlier version of the Ninja Bomb before it became more sophisticated, deadly, 
and precise. The AGM-114 Hellfire missile is a force to reckon with. The Hellfire in the name is used to denote the Helleborn laser fire. It weighs around 108 pounds and is about 64 inches in length, 7 inches in diameter, and has a wingspan of 13 inches. It can travel at supersonic speeds of up to Mach 1.3, has a range of 6.8 miles and can be launched from an altitude of more than 5,000 feet. It carries different types of warheads depending upon the variant. This missile has 10 variants that were designed for several mission objectives and purposes, but they all have one main objective, and that is to destroy armored vehicles like military tanks. We have to get the basic knowledge of the anti-tank version before we can understand how the R-9X truly works. The anti-tank missile is made up of five main actions, and they are the section in the front of the missile, which is called the seeker section, the autopilot and warhead section, the guidance section, the propulsion section, and the control section. Now let's begin with the seeker section. This section contains semi-active laser homing and highly accurate laser spot acquisition and tracking. This means that it can detect a laser spot on the target and accurately guide the missile toward it. Some of the carriers that can launch this missile include the Apache Helicopter, AH-1W Super Cobra, MQ-1 Predator, and the MQ-9 Reaper Unmanned Aerial Systems. The designator emits invisible coated laser, pulses known as pulsi, repetition, frequency, and this is what gets fired at the target. When the laser hits the target, it bounces off into the sky where it is detected by the seeker in the Helfira missile. Now the missile makes necessary course corrections to move towards the target and hits it on the topmost section because that's the least protected part of the tank. Military personnel on the ground can carry a handheld laser designator to point out the target for the laser-guided missiles. The AGM-114 Longbow version is quite different because it does not carry a laser seeker. Instead, it makes use of a millimeter wave, active radar homing system, which does not require external guidance to reach the target. Behind the seeker section, there's the electronic autopilot. The autopilot collects the data from the seeker and the guidance section, and based on that data, it will correct the position of the control fins to move the missile toward the target. Directly below the autopilot, there is a 3.5-pound precursor warhead. So, when the missile gets closer to the target, the proximity fuse detonates the precursor warhead, which is used to destroy the explosive reactive armor used on military tanks. The reactive armor fights fire with fire. When a projectile hits the armor, the armor explodes and stops the missile from damaging the body of the tank. The precursor warhead is made of a copper cone surrounded by an explosive. When the proximity fuse sets off the explosive, it explodes and turns the copper cone into a high-speed jet of molten copper. This molten copper jet shoots out and hits the reactive armor. The armor explodes and stops the precursor charge. There is a 12.4-pound main warhead with a bigger copper cone behind the precursor warhead. This warhead is set off immediately after the precursor warhead. The molten copper jet from the main warhead destroys the vital internal components as well as the occupants inside the tank. The tank is disabled or destroyed when it hits the same spot as that of the precursor warhead. Behind the main warhead, there's a pneumatic accumulator. Nitrogen or helium gases are stored in this accumulator and are pressured to 8,800 pounds per square inch. They can last up to 7 seconds in normal conditions and 55 seconds in cold climates. These gases are utilized in moving the fins with the help of electron pneumatic actuators inside the guidance section. Three gyros can be found in the guidance section. A roll gyro, a pitch gyro, and a fly gyro. These gyros are used to sense the attitude of the missile in flight. They have a rotating mass inside which acts as a gyroscope. The autopilot measures the position of the gyros, and based on that, it corrects the position of the fins accordingly to keep the missile stable throughout the flight. The Hellfire missile makes use of the technology Thal TX-657 solid rocket motor for propulsion. 
It is made of butanitriol trinitrate and burns for only three seconds, after which the missile glides toward the target like a glide bomb. It produces less smoke, which makes it difficult for the enemies to detect its position and gives them less time to use countermeasures against it. The last section is the control section. The Hellfire missile has four inline, wide cord span fixed wings with control fins at the trailing edge. It has four clipped delta stabilizing fins in a cruciform configuration, which is used to steer the missile in flight. The fins are moved with the help of electron pneumatic actuators, which use nitrogen or helium gases stored in the pneumatic accumulator. This is how a typical anti-tank version of the Hellfire missile works. Let's go into details of the clandestine version of the Hellfire missile, known as the R9X missile. It surfaced for the first time on February 26, 2017, when it was used in a drone strike to eliminate a person traveling in a car. The missile became well known in 2022 when another important target was taken out in a drone strike in Kabul, Afghanistan. A fascinating video surfaced online following a drone strike that displayed the leftover components of the R-9X missile post explosion. In the footage, it was observed that there were several breakdowns, with MGP serving as the manufacturer's code denoting Martin Marietta, which is now recognized as Lockheed Martin. The digits 17K denote the month and year of production, while 835 functions as the interfix number, indicating the specific production method or style. Notably, the missile version AGM-114. Let us have a look and try to understand how this missile operates. Keep in mind that the missile does not have explosives. Instead, it is equipped with six long blades that help it cuff through its targets. This system is similar to the operation of the anti-tank version, but the only difference can be seen in the warhead section. The missile carries only the autopilot without the precursor warhead and six blades instead of the main warhead. These blades are deployed when the missile gets closer to the target. It consists of a main body to which the blade holders are attached, and both of them are held together with a circular metallic bracket. Six razor-sharp blades are attached to the blade holder and are held together with the help of hinges. They are deployed aerodynamically and electropneumatically with the help of high-pressure gas from the pneumatic accumulator or with the help of explosive bolts like the ones used in rocket stage separation. The blades within this missile are intentionally designed with holes to decrease the overall weight of the ammunition. These razor-sharp blades boast remarkable strength, enabling them to effortlessly slice through the roofs of automobiles. The missile's extraordinary precision is such that it can selectively target a particular individual within the vehicle. At the same time, the remaining passengers emerge with minimal to no injuries, underscoring the advanced capabilities and precision of this weapon. When the R9X missile is fired, it activates blades through a proximity fuse as it approaches the target with huge kinetic force. The missile precisely strikes the target, cutting through and eliminating obstacles. Its primary purpose is to minimize harm to bystanders or unintended individuals. The Hellfire missiles are deployed from M299 or M310 launchers. These launchers are mounted on Apache helicopters, MQ-9 Reaper, and MQ-1 Predator UAVs, which allows the missiles to be launched in any order. The different versions have distinct features. The 114 Longbow variant is suitable for use from ships and aircraft against armored vehicles, while the Romeo version is versatile, targeting armored vehicles, fortified positions, soft, and open targets. The K version carries a high explosive warhead, which is mainly used on armored tanks only. The Hellfires can also be launched from armored vehicles as well as from the ground. Even though the US government never officially acknowledged the presence of the R9X version of the missile, the world knows that a missile like this exists and has been used multiple times in the past few years and most probably will be used in the future as well.
Before the emergence of this bomb with its scary and impressive ability, the Russians were leading in the development of advanced missiles with the Sarmat and the Avangard. This ammunition has made waves in the defense industry. Let's check them out. The RS-28 Sarmat, also referred to by the media as Satan II, is a formidable addition to Russia's military capabilities. Developed by the Makayev Rocket Design Bureau, this liquid-fueled intercontinental ballistic missile boasts cutting-edge features, including a hypersonic glide vehicle and the capability to function as a fractional orbital bombardment system. This missile was named after the ancient Sarmatians and is strategically intended to replace the aging Soviet R-36M ICBM in Russia's formidable arsenal, showcasing the nation's commitment to maintaining a technologically advanced and potent defense apparatus. Back in February 2014, a Russian military official mentioned that they anticipated the Sarmat to be ready for use by around 2020. In May 2014, another source hinted that the program was speeding up, and in his view, it could make up to 100% of Russia's stationary land-based nuclear arsenal by 2021. It is part of six new strategic weapons introduced by Russian President Vladimir Putin on March 1, 2018. It had its initial test flight on April 20, 2022. A state contract for manufacturing and supplying the Sarmat strategic missile system was signed on August 16, 2022. The missile officially joined active service in September 2023, becoming the world's longest range and most powerful existing intercontinental ballistic missile system. The Sarmat is a powerful missile with three stages using liquid fuel. It can travel up to 18,000 kilometers and weighs 208.1 metric tons when launched. The missile is 35.3 meters long and has a diameter of 3 meters. Classified as a heavy intercontinental ballistic missile, the Sarmat can carry a payload weighing 10 tons and supports various warhead options. According to Russian sources, it has the capability to carry up to 10 large warheads 16 smaller ones, a mix of warheads and countermeasures, or hypersonic boost glide vehicles. This missile has the ability to carry a payload of about 10 tonnes, which could include 10,750 kiloton warheads, 15 or 16 smaller Mir V warheads, and 3 to 5 avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicles. It also has the capability to carry a mix of warheads and countermeasures to defend against anti-ballistic missile systems. The Russian Ministry of Defense has stated that this missile serves as Russia's response to the U.S. prompt global strike system. It has a brief boost phase, making it harder for satellites like the U.S. space-based infrared system to track it using infrared sensors. This design is to reduce the chances of interception. Additionally, Sarmat gives Russia a fractional orbital bombardment ability, allowing it to follow a path over the South Pole towards targets in the United States. The way it moves has an advantage in the sense that it can evade any defense system in the northern part of the U.S. Reports suggest that the RS-28 launch sites might have the Mosier active protection system. This system is designed to counter an enemy's initial attack by releasing a cloud of metal arrows or balls. The projectile can destroy incoming bombs, cruise missiles, and intercontinental ballistic missile warheads at altitudes of up to six kilometers. On December 24, 2019, at a display of new weapon systems at the National Defense Management Center, it was announced that Sarmat can perform a 35,000 kilometer suborbital flight. The testing of the missile system was projected to finish in 2021, and between 2020 and 2027, there were plans to upgrade 20 missile regiments with the RS-28. Let's move on to the Avangard. The Avangard, also known as Vanguard, is a Russian hypersonic glide vehicle. It can ride on the UR-100 UTKH, R-36M2, and RS-28 Sarmat heavy intercontinental ballistic missiles as a multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle payload. 
This vehicle has the capability to carry both nuclear and non-nuclear payloads. The Avangard is said to travel at re-entry speeds, exceeding Mach 25. Heavy trucks with the ability to move around and operate at lower heights are different from regular missiles. They are harder to defend against due to their speed and agility, which could lead to a new arms race. Avangard, as per Jane's analysis, is a fast glider that can make sharp maneuvers, making it supposedly immune to missile defense. It carries a powerful nuclear warhead, and its high speed makes it better at penetrating targets than slower missiles. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.